Hi everyone, this is Gary Wilson and welcome to tonight's live webinar for the Investor Agent Training Program. Um, it's, it's, uh, at the end of the night we're going to you know, download this, upload it so everybody gets a recording of it. And welcome aboard for those of you who've been in the flipping program or the uh, program on how to buy rentals. Or for, for those of you who are interested in those specific subjects, if you're, you've been through the Investor Agent Training Program, <clears throat> And you want to focus on flipping for yourself, for example, uh, or buying rentals? Just please let me know, and we'll uh, we'll get you set up. Um, obviously, you get a tremendous break because you're already a student. So, welcome aboard, everybody. Um, what we're going to do tonight is again talk about how to hire a virtual assistant, and you'll know you're ready to hire a virtual assistant when you find yourself. Um, feeling overwhelmed, you know, you find yourself putting in hours in the evenings and on the weekends that are not directly related to a client. In other words, if you're out with a client, that's obviously the, the most likely way to generate a transaction. Um, with investors, the good news is you're usually doing that during the day, during the week, during, during daylight hours, okay? So if you find yourself doing a lot of paperwork at night on the weekends, it's time that you might you want to start looking at hiring a virtual assistant. Okay, now just a couple of quick things to get think to get started here, um, and we mentioned this before the recording was started. <clears throat> you don't have to hire a full-time employee. In fact, I recommend that you only hire for initially about two hours per week, because if you hire correctly, you can do that often for about ten dollars for the two hours. In other words, about five dollars an hour. Sometimes it's more. Now the virtual assistant I use personally is. He's been with me for quite a long time, six or seven years. Um, he's awesome, and I pay him uh, like $8 an hour, okay? He is in the Philippines. And a lot of the virtual assistants that you're going to be hiring will actually be out of the country and from places like the Philippines, okay? So, but initially, I just hired a few hours a week, and you want to do that for a couple of reasons. Number one is a lot of you don't have big budgets in the beginning, but you can probably afford you know, $10 a week, $20 a week until you can generate one additional transaction per month and then you can then you can afford uh, maybe $100 per week, okay? So initially you start small, always learn small before you grow big. The other reason why you want to start small is you want to give them small tasks that are easily measurable and trackable. It's very important because you want to you want to be able to measure and track the results. You know, is you 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 know what it takes for you to do a particular task. When you train someone new to do that same task, in the beginning they will take more time, okay. But once they've done it a few times, they will they will should get very close to matching your pace. So that's a you want to write that down. That's a very important. Uh, initial factor to consider is that they're not going to be like you initially but they will eventually. Now, what that leads me to is the next subject is, what type of tasks do you give them? Again, it should be easily measurable and trackable, but it also should be easily definable. In other words, not only can you define it clearly and articulate it clearly, but you know, based on the average person's ability to type, for example, how long it should take to do that particular task. So a couple things to remember here. You're thinking of a task that you can measure and track. You're thinking of a task that you can easily and clearly define. And what that means is not just so you can articulate it, but also you can, you'll can you know, you can anticipate and project what the turnaround time should be on that. So it's very, very important. Uh, now, speaking of articulating and defining, you want to, um, what you want to do is this. You identify the tasks that you're looking to delegate, okay? And then you identify the role, all right? You're going to define the role. In this case, the role is an admin person. See, they will likely have a CS disk profile or SC disk profile. And if any of you don't know what a disk profile is, just let me know. Um, if your most real estate offices now can give you a disk profile, whether it's KW or Remax, Caldwell Banker, Century 21, what have you. Uh, there's a certain one in Keller Williams they like to use. I like to use the Tony Robbins disk profile. So what you can do is have the virtual assistant, before you actually give them an assignment, 
and pay them any money, have them do a disk profile. And you can see if they match the type of profile you're looking for for an admin person. Again, it should be a more S and C type. Okay? Um, it's okay if they got a little bit of D, a little bit of I, but you're looking for someone who's detail oriented and loyal. And you're going to get that with the SCs or the CSs. Okay? So you're defining the task, then you're defining the role. And I'm going to show you how to find the folks. Don't worry about that. But I just want you to know that when you first identify a few candidates, you're going to give them a disk profile. It's free. It doesn't cost anything. Tony Robbins is free. Okay. Um, now, you also want to identify in the very beginning what is what is your primary need. Okay. What is your primary need? Not just now, but going forward. So initially, you're going to assign a particular task. But what you're keeping in mind is a long-term gain. You know, you're going to find a person you can you can work with easily um, and productively, okay. And you want that person to stay around quite a while. So you want to you want to motivate them and incentivize them, okay. And you start them off small, one task, then you give them the second task, then you give them the third task, so forth and so on, until you're satisfied that your your tasks that you have been performing that are easily assignable. In other words, you can easily delegate because you can easily define and you can easily articulate the nature of that task. Okay, um, You control the flow. You control the faucet, so to speak. So you give them, you hire them two hours for now. Next month, you add four hours. After that, you add eight hours. Eventually, you get to a person working maybe two days a week for you. For a lot of agents, that's all you need. Maybe it's four hours a day. Maybe it's two hours a day. But you start off small, and then you grow big. Okay, so you want to find out, in order to do that, what is your need overall? And I know everybody's thinking, well, it's just doing all that paperwork. Well, that may be a good start, but what about um, sending out emails? What about executing your marketing campaigns? In other words, you determine the marketing you're going to do, but you don't do the task. You have your virtual assistant execute the task for the, for the marketing campaigns. You follow what I'm saying? So you're in control. You're the rainmaker, and your virtual assistant is the admin person who actually executes the task associated with the marketing campaign. Okay? So in any case, you're, so now you've identified an, immediate, an initial task. You've identified the role. You've identified your, your need going long term. And next thing you want to do is uh, what will they do? You want to get specific, okay, on the task. And long term, you know, maybe they can do four or five things for you on a regular basis. Fill out paperwork, um, send out emails, um, kick off marketing campaigns. Um, you know, do, there's all kinds of stuff they can do for you online on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Okay, you can write an article or write a blog and have them uh, basically promote the blog and get it out there on the internet. Okay, just giving you some examples. All right, now before I go any further, let me do a just quick pause here and look at some of what I wrote here. Again, you can all take screenshots of this, read it as I'm talking, but more importantly, you're going to get this actual Word document in the in the email. Okay, so the first thing I want you to think of initially, broad term, is that you are an entrepreneur. All right, and your natural tendency is to be involved in every task at all times. We just can't help it. You eventually grow out of that, but in the beginning, that's what you're going to be doing. Okay? Um, hiring a local assistant is generally going to be too expensive. I mean, nowadays, people are making $15, $20 an hour for basic rudimentary um, task oriented jobs. And the fact is, you don't have to pay that kind of money. You can hire somebody overseas who's willing to work for sometimes 2 or $3 an hour, um, oftentimes it's going to be around five or six dollars an hour, and the really good ones will charge you more, like about, um, you know, again in my case, eight dollars an hour. Um, I don't start anybody off at eight dollars an hour. I'll start them off at four, for example, if they have a proven track record, and then I'll inch them up to eight. I'll go to five, then I'll go to six, then I'll go to seven, then I'll go to eight, over a period of months or even years. Okay. So, in any case. Um, Let's, uh, let's start looking at some actual costs here. Here's why you want to look at an overseas virtual assistant, all right? Um, there's an expense to this. There's an expense to full-time full employees. And this chart here is going to give you – oops, hang on one second. I'm going to reduce my panel so I can actually control 
uh, what's going on here. So hang on one second. Um, let's go back up. Here we go. All right. The expense of a full-time employee. Numbers tell the story. Numbers and charts and graphs. Okay, this is uh, based on a 2014 report, Association for, for Talent Development, ATD. Uh, it's a state of the industry report. And you can see um, what the average cost is and what some of your percentages are for its associated cost or cost associated with having an employee. So, you know, if employee is earning, for example, here's the example. If an employee is earning $35,000 a year, on average, the employer, employer will be shelling out $4,340 in Social Security, $1,015 in Medicare taxes. All right, this is expensive for a lot of people, a lot of businesses. I know because I actually have employees, and I've had employees in the past too. Um, so you can see, for example, by looking at this whoop, this chart, I'm sorry, I keep jumping around there. Hang on, let me go back. Um, the rise in costs over the years. Look at look at 2009. This is now seven years old, and look at Social Security, Medicare is now 15 percent. Um, Social Security loan was 12 percent. Medicare is 3%, all right? These are just some some of the costs associated with having an employee. So if you could hire somebody, they could work for you for $8 an hour, even if they were full-time, that would be about $16,000 a year. Would you rather pay $16,000 a year or over $40,000 a year? In other words, um, two to three times more by hiring somebody stateside. Or would you rather give somebody a shop for example, from the, someone from the Philippines. And by the way, the people from the Philippines, uh, they're, they're United States friendly. They love Western culture. They absorb it, and the, the, the clothing, the music, um, they're very, very much um, into the Western culture. So it's a, they, they're easy to hire because they want to serve, they want to please, and they want to experience more of the Western culture, all right? So, in any case, those are the, some of the reasons, one of the main reasons why you might want to consider hiring a virtual assistant, okay? Um, we call them, for short, we call those, we call them our, uh, VAs, virtual assistant is a VA, all right? So, in any case, um, you can get virtual assistants from all over the place. It's not just Phil the Philippines. We like the Philippines because it's very uh, U.S. friendly, Canadian friendly. Um, they can do a lot of things for you. They're, they're essentially independent contractors. So you're not hiring an actual employee. You're hiring a vendor or an independent contractor, all right? And they're responsible for paying all their own taxes, all right? Uh, Technology has made it a lot easier to communicate with anyone anywhere in the world. In most cases, you're going to be using email, by the way. Uh, sometimes they will use the phone. Depends on how strong the, the Filipino's uh, English is, all right? Um, Let's see, also, of course, businesses have been looking to reduce costs in any way they can across the board because it is becoming more and more expensive um, to run a business in uh, North America, right, for example. Um, and we believe there's about uh, 25,000 of these folks worldwide. All right, again, we mentioned the Philippines a couple times. It does tend to be a pretty good hot spot. Um, you, can, you can Google uh, virtual assistants and find a number of different websites that you can use. We're going to get into that a little bit here. Uh, let's, there's, I, well, I'll just I'll actually give you some, so let's just look at that. Um, hang on one second. Let me go back up. Um, yeah, we'll get into that here in a little bit later. But um, in any case, there's, there, there are websites specifically associated with the Philippines. Um, you know, my, my first attempt at this was about a, you know, maybe a decade ago. Um, there's, Here's some possible uses, by the way. Let's say you're like me and you travel. I can have a virtual assistant take care of all my lodging requirements, all of my air, you know, air travel requirements, rental car requirements, um, all that kind of stuff a virtual assistant can take care of, right? Um, now, you have to train these folks to do specifically what it is you want to do. So the best way to do that is actually by using GoToWebinar, because you can show the person exactly what you're doing. You can demonstrate it live online, audio, video, okay, audio and visual. And then you can record it and send them the recording the very next day so they actually have a recording of what it was you were going over, 
okay? So in any case, the, the, the big thing is this. You're looking to gain valuable time on if you look at if you look at like a balance sheet, assets and liabilities, you should you should know that time is an asset, okay? And what you're trying to do is um, reduce the demands on your time and increase the time you have uh, for more favorable activities like being with your family, for example. All right. Um, let's see. In any case, uh, let's move forward here. Um, the big now here's what's in it for them. The reason they like to do this, the reason why. Uh, virtual assistants will work for, for far fewer dollars per hour than most people in the U.S. and Canada. It's because they're at their standard cost of living or their average cost of living over there in the Philippines is much lower than ours, and they simply don't need as much money to live on. Also, the average wages in the Philippines are way, way lower, much lower than the average wages in North America. So they're happy. They're happy to hire, uh, or happy to uh, hire themselves out for three, four, five, six, seven, eight dollars an hour. Can it make sense? Okay. Now we're going to show you a little bit about hired, how to actually hire these guys. All right. Let me do a quick pause though, and look to see if we have any questions so far. Um, I'm going to try to slow it down a little bit and make sure everybody has an opportunity um, to chime in here. Let's see. What are the questions? Um, Okay, let's see. Uh, that's back at the beginning. Let's see. I just saw one, so hang on one second. Um, okay, Joe's okay, so thanks, Joe. Um, okay, what are the tasks? What are the tasks you had your VA do for the first two hours? And this is uh, fossil, high fossil. How are you? So initially, what we had them do is I was doing a lot of um, uh, Craigslist advertising. So what I did is I set up multiple accounts, Fassel, and I gave one account to one virtual assistant, and I had them post all the ads to the to the account on Facebook. I'm sorry, on uh, on Craigslist. Excuse me. That was my first task because it would take about a couple hours, and I could go online and I could see that all the ads were placed properly. Okay, and there's a number of other considerations there when it comes to Craigslist. The rules are always changing. Uh, there's limitations. Um, we can spend a whole session on Craigslist advertising. If you guys want, let me know, and we can go over that on another another webinar. But essentially, Fastle, that's what I had them do. That was their very first task. And I was doing a lot of heavy, heavy marketing in multiple geographic locations, and I needed people to do it, to, to execute the tasks for me. So I ended up having multiple virtual assistants. In fact, I had... On Craigslist alone, at one time I had three virtual assistants operating all at once, okay, using multiple accounts. All right, so that was the first thing I did. Um, the second thing I did is I, I learned to um, determine who had what skills. They are all going to tell you they've got certain skills, but you want to test them out. So it turn, turns out one of the folks I used was very good with social media, like LinkedIn, um, Facebook, eventually even Twitter. And I had that person execute all of my tasks on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. Okay, I gave them access to my accounts. And again, it's something, remember, so remember, Fast, remember we talked about measuring and tracking? So things like uh, Facebook advertising, um, social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, those, the results of those tasks are easily measurable because you simply log on. You go on and look at LinkedIn and look at Facebook and look at um, Twitter and look and see what they've done. And you can see that the tasks that you've assigned them have been being executed. So hopefully that, that helps you uh, give you a good idea fast of what you can do initially. Um, let's see. This is Carl. Uh, Carl Torgerson. Hey, Carl. How you doing, buddy? Um, other than hourly rate reasons, why – not hire a local part-time assistant as a W-9 independent contractor. Um, you, you can, Carl, but again, remember, um, over here in the States, you're going to be hard-pressed to find somebody who will work, you know, for anywhere from 3 to $8 an hour to do the kind of things we want them to do. Um, generally speaking, people are going to want around 15 to $16 an hour here in the States. That's what we've discovered. Many of them want more. They want $20, $25 an hour, okay? Um very, very rarely can I find somebody who's willing to work for $12 an hour as an independent contractor. And part of the reason is, Carl, is as an independent contractor, they're responsible for all of their taxes. 
So even though you you're paying them 15 bucks an hour, they're uh, a large chunk of what they're earning is going to pay Social Security, um, unemployment, you know, that's all that kind of stuff. It just it just you know, in the in the federal government, the IRS several years ago really started cracking down on independent contractors and depending on the circumstances they may be required to pay both sides of employer employer taxes for social security and unemployment and so forth pretty big hit on those guys so so the uh, independent contractor hourly rates went up dramatically that that's really why Carl um, so any case um, let's see hang on one second I want to make sure I make a note here um, Okay, sorry about that. Um, let's look and see what other questions we have. I think we're okay right now. Okay, if you look here online, you'll see that there are three websites that um, I can personally recommend. You, you might like one, you might not like all three, but staff.com is one of them. Onlinejobs.ph, that's directly related to the Philippines, virtual assistants in the Philippines, and Upwork. Um, there's also one, and you've probably heard of it because it's uh, they're they're an affiliate of Keller Williams. It's called um, Help um, Outdesk, um, Outdesk.com. I actually know the owner. The owner is a member of the Mastermind Group Go Abundance that I'm in. And um, his virtual assistants, you know, they're going to charge you more per hour because they're acting as the interface for you. They're um, they're basically interfacing between you and a virtual assistant, and they're going to charge a fee for that a portion a portion of proceeds. But essentially, if you just write down these three websites, or do a screenshot, or just wait till tomorrow when you get the actual um, recording and the and the file that I'm going to send with it, it'll have this on there. Okay. Um, the two basic methods are this: you can either um, have another company like Outdesk.com do all the hiring for you okay and you just basically do all that they do all the screening they do everything but you pay Outdesk and Outdesk pays the virtual assistant okay and one of the advantages is, is you don't have to do all that seeking and searching and scanning and screening and all that you just simply have faith that Outdesk has done the work and you start using the the um, independent contractor the virtual assistant you know, a little bit, a little bit at a time. Again, two hours per week, and you can test them out. And if it doesn't work out, you just call Outdesk and say that guy's not working out. I've been with him for three weeks. He's just not getting it. He's not following instructions and so forth and so on. All right, that's method A. Method B is you do all that yourself. You can go directly to the um, to the Filipino um, virtual assistants. Um, you can uh, put a message out there. They're all going to hit you with a whole bunch of emails. And you go through a screening process, okay, and you figure out the top 10 that you actually want to have maybe send you a letter. Say, you know what, send me a letter um, in your own writing explaining to me what it is you've done for other people and why you would like to work for me. All you're looking for is to, you're trying to gauge how well their English is, how, how proficient they are um, in speaking English and, and writing English, by the way, too. You want to make sure their uh, gram grammar and punctuation, the use of uh, 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 vocabulary is, is well enough that you can have them perform tasks for you that may require them to uh, be using emails and things like that. Okay, so you check them out, and the ones that surface to the top, say the top three, I suggest, again, this is you doing it yourself. This is you, you're saving the extra couple bucks by doing all this printing yourself. So the next thing you do is, Settle on three, and actually give them a, a real task. Give them give them all the same task, or give them all three different tasks that are very closely related. Um, like give them each their own Craigslist account. Have them all post an ad on Craigslist for different properties that you want to promote. Um, you can measure how long it took to do them. You can measure the uh, how well the ad looks, how it looks online. You can also measure how well the ad pulls. Because a good virtual assistant is going to create a good ad, and it'll have a good, you'll pull, you'll have a lot of people calling you, in other words, okay? So that's what you want to do for yourself. Um, let me check where it looks like we had a question that just came in. Um, hey, Sherry, how are you doing? Uh, let's see, this is Sherry saying, similar to Elance, which is great for branding needs like logos, websites, etc. Yeah, there's, um, 
there's Elance, there's Fiverr. So there are ways to get uh, hired out for specific jobs here in the States, like I used Fiverr before. Um, but what I figured out was um, I had better results with the, with the Filipino virtual assistants. Um, I had some good results with Fiverr, but it ended up not really being, um, you know, when I compared the results, I was getting a better bang for my buck with the, with the virtual assistants, okay? Um, that's just, that was just my own experience, but good, uh, good point there and well noted. Okay, so budgeting. Um, you've obviously got to figure out what you can afford. You know, how much do you want to pay? How, how often can you pay? Um, you know, essentially what you want to pay, how, the, a lot of it depends on how much you want to farm out, okay? And what expense can you live with? Again, I, now I look at this actually, I will just tell you this. I don't look at a hire as an expense. I look at a hire as an investment, okay? So if you think you're going to be stretching to spend, you know, say 32 hours a week for a virtual assistant at $8 an hour for four hours, um, think about what you're going to gain from that, what the benefit you're going to gain is. It's going to allow you to free up an additional eight hours of your time, which is one more day's work that you can use to either spend time with your family or better yet, find another investor, okay, or create your own your own meetup group, your own niche group, for example. Um, the bottom line is, is when you, when you begin to think of this as an investment and not an expense, it'll change your philosophy, it'll change your mindset, and it'll catapult you into, into the world of being, feeling, thinking, speaking, acting like a business owner. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, let me check here because I thought I saw another question come in. Um, Let's see, I actually got a couple of them here, okay. Um, this is Fassel, hey Fassel. Okay, do you have a copy of the ads for Craigslist and job posting? Um, I, I will ask Beverly, the person we used to have do that is no longer working with us, um, but we can give you certainly samples of Craigslist ads. Um, you know, it's been quite a long time. What I would do is actually Fassel, you know what I do? I would go on the Craigslist and look at the ads yourself. Look and see what's out there. Um, you can see what other people are advertising, how they're advertising, and I'll, I'll ask Beverly if she can locate, drum up some of the older ones. Okay, and we can we'll share them with you. All right, what what's your primary use of VA in business? Real estate agents, resale business versus making for or advertising investments. One more appropriate than the other, uh, and this is for Carl. Hey, Carl. Yes. Yeah, so, so back in the beginning, what I was describing was uh, for me personally. I would have them focus on one task at a time, like like uh, putting Craigslist ads out there uh, for for marketing properties that I have for sale. Um, you know, another one is is I've used them to help me with my travel arrangements. Um, you can use them to do paperwork for you, so you can train them how to fill out your your listing agreements, how to fill out your your purchase agreements, how to fill out a, the various addendums. And then give them access, or share, have them, you know, share access with them. So when you have a new contract, you send them the the, um, the criteria, and they will fill out all the paperwork for you. And they actually will send it, put it up on Dot Loop, and do all that for you, and keep it, keep track of it. Basically, be like a transaction coordinator for you. Um, you just never see them. That's another excellent, excellent use for a virtual assistant is a transaction coordinator. Um, I wouldn't, by the way, Carl, I wouldn't give them that right out the gate. Uh, I would have that. I would work, build them up to that level. Okay. So, um, in any case, um, let's see. One of the biggest mistakes I've seen people do is to hire someone simply because they're the cheapest person there is, and he, you, you don't want to do that. You want to hire based on matching uh, roles to responsibilities or roles to task. In other words, okay. Um, so, you hire the you hire the person who fits the role in the role that is the right role for the task. You hire the person that way, and believe me, if you spend six bucks an hour versus three, chances are you're gonna get a, get a lot better results by hiring the right person and not the cheapest person. Does that make sense? Okay, let me reduce the panel because I wanna go back here and make sure we're, um, we're staying on track here. So budgeting, we talked about that. Um, I'll give a little bit more here. Um, here's some things you can expect. If you hire a person, um, uh, you know, full time, 
you know, they're making, they're being paid in pesos. Remember, the Filipino Philippines were settled by the Spanish, so their currency is the currency of pesos, right? And the the exchange rate is actually um, very unfavorable to them. So, you know, basic virtual assistant doing data entry, web research, things like that, earn twelve thousand, eight thousand pesos per month which equates to 260 to $400 per month. So in other words, you literally can get somebody, you know, hire somebody if, if effectively full-time, and it may only cost you no more than $400 a month. How about that? All right? Now, if you've got a really good person, and, you know, you just have to, you just have to start working with a few of them, work with three of them initially, monitor, track, and measure. The ones that really surface to the top, they're ambitious, they're loyal, they do a good job. They follow through. Um, you know, you're going to pay them a little bit more, 18000 or 30000 pesos a month or anywhere upwards of, say, 600 even $650 um, uh, a month. Okay, But that's still a fraction. I mean, my gosh, I don't think you could hire anybody in the States for $650 a week to do this kind of stuff, right? Um, now, to do content writing, like if they're very proficient with the English language, um, great grammar, use of punctuation, vocabulary, uh, you certainly want to pay them more because you can have them do a lot of uh, uh, what we call ghost writing. So you can, if you're creating blogs, for example, you could give them the subject, have them do the research on related articles and, and blogs, and have them do the uh, content writing for you. All right? If you're doing more advanced stuff like SEO and more, more online marketing, obviously you're going to be paying a lot more for that. Um, it's a very very much an in-demand skill, and there are very few people who truly understand SEO. So my personal preference is um, I don't hire anybody uh, that I don't personally know and trust with a proven track record to do any SEO for me at all. Um, so that's a challenge when it comes to the Philippines because there's no way to know those people personally. Again, you can try them out and see how it works out, see what kind of results you get. But remember, SEO is not as easy to track and measure when it comes to results uh, for the activities that you're engaging in, is that you follow me on that? Um, it's not an easily measurable and trackable activity, so I kind of steer away from that. That's just my own personal two cents worth. All right, if they've got excellent development skills, yep, you can pay them a whole lot more. Um, you know, up to two thousand dollars a month if you want. All right, and there are some good VAs, virtual assistants in the Philippines, who are excellent at doing web development. You know, SEO is a different animal. But web development, boy, once they have the skills, uh, doesn't matter what language they speak, boy, they can do a, quite a quite a good job, right? So, in any case, so far so good. We're making progress here. Uh, one of the things you want to you want to remember is you have to always create a job description. Okay, remember in the beginning we talked about at, at defining a specific task and in long term identifying your long term needs. You be you need to be able to document that and articulate that. So these are high level subjects, you know, customer support, content creation, personal assistance, website development. You know, you need to elaborate on each of these. Like in your case, you might be hiring, um, you know, a personal, personal assistant or customer support. Well, get very granular on your description of what that means. Give them specific tasks. What I would do is I'd take each of these categories hit the cursor, go down the next line and create bullet items under each one. In the beginning, you're just going to have one. You're going to have basically someone help you do basic admin work, paperwork, like filling out contracts and things like that. Just spell it out. Give examples. Give as many examples as you possibly can. Okay? Um, all right. That's uh, enough of that one there. Another thing, too, is once you become familiar with this and you're comfortable with it, you're going to want to basically hand out more uh more tasks, okay, because you're you're going to be freed up to bring in more transactions, all right? So one of the things you want to do is have a funnel built to bring in um, fresh applicants. These are virtual assistants who are applying to work with you because you're going to be putting out some ads you are going to respond, and you might find somebody who's better than the person you're using now. You could shift the person out and bring in a new person gradually. You might have three people. You might have to end up with five people or six people. I know, I know some some folks who have as many as 30 virtual assistants going on at the same time, okay? And they're constantly interviewing new virtual assistants and testing them out to see if they're going to replace some of the existing ones who maybe started getting kind of lazy. But uh, you can do that by doing some basic um, 
marketing on on Facebook, LinkedIn, and of course Craigslist. Okay, um, that's how you can build a funnel of ready of you know, applicants who are applying to you on a regular basis. Right. Um, in any case, just remember that's not something you're going to do right now. It's something you'll do in the future. All right. Now, in any case, uh, training. Um, this is critical, guys. You've got to be patient, and I know everybody here has different uh, communication styles, different disk profiles, but the bottom line is, is the more patient you are, the more detailed you are, and the more articulate you are, the more clearly you can define um, tasks and roles, the better your results are going to be. Because think about it, the more clearly you communicate uh, specific tasks, and sequence of activities to, to these virtual assistants, the more likely they are to follow the instructions more clearly, more precisely, um, and give you exactly what you want. So you have to train them. It, it could take you a couple of weeks. I know on average, I bet uh, we spend an average of three weeks per virtual assistant, not every hour of every day, of course. In the beginning, we give them a task, something simple, easy to measure and track, measure the results, if we like what we saw, we give them another two-hour task. If we got three good results in a row, we would give them something else, another task. So we're basically adding to their workload a little bit at a time, and each time we do that, we're training them, we're conditioning them um, to be good uh, workers and to also be loyal. So in any case, you start off with the simple rudimentary stuff, and you basically move up from there. That's really the name of the game there. And the only way to do it is all in the job training and spending time with them. It doesn't take a lot of time, but you, you should be able to give them a, a simple task initially. And I highly recommend you do it all via online, on, on uh, email. We'll talk about that next year, all on email, all right? Um, now, one of the things to, com to consider is, for the most part, if particularly if you work with virtual assistants from the Philippines, you know they're they're effectively halfway around the world. Okay, so emails work very well with these folks. Uh, you can use phone calls every now and then, maybe initially to have an initial conversation. I actually recommend that. Um, so the first interaction with these folks could be a simple phone call. Uh, it might be late at night for you, early in the morning for them, or vice versa. But just do it for about 15 minutes or a half hour. You're looking to establish rapport. And you're also looking to establish their proficiency with the English language. Okay. Um, in any case, uh, you can. You can. There's other things you can do too, guys. You can give them typing assignments. Um, I like handwriting, but I also like typing assignments. Um, but you, you know, you don't have to clock in uh, 40 hours a week. It's just not going to be a requirement. You know, the better you are at communicating. Uh, the better the results you're going to get, the less time it's going to take for you to work with these folks and train them and get, the, get them up to speed. And there are um, online tools you can use for tracking these projects. One of the ones we use in Keller Williams is called Basecamp. Um, a, lot of the, a lot of KW programs, um, like the Language of Sales, for example, excellent training program, um, uses Basecamp to manage the program, to manage the program. You can do that with virtual assistants. I've never used Asana, A-S-A-N-A. -A. I hear it gets uh, great reviews. Um, at this point, let me do a quick, uh, a quick check here. Let's just check for questions. So hang on one second. Let's see. Let's see. This was, uh, did I get Carl's? Yeah, I did answer Carl's question. And we're caught up at that point. Okay, we're good. So we're caught up. So let's move on to the next critical subject was paying. How do you actually pay these guys? <laughs> okay. There's a number of, number of ways you can pay, and I'll give you a chart with some examples down here in a second. Uh, PayPal, obviously, is a very popular way to pay for something. Um, you know, there is a fee. It's essentially 4.5%. But it is, um, uh, it is effective. It's timely. Um, PayPal does all the admin work for you, essentially taking money out of your business account and getting into the account of your virtual assistant, right? Um, I like using wire transfers. Um, personally, I use Wells Fargo. That's my bank that I use for business purposes. Uh, we've also used, um, uh, what's the other one we use? I forget the, um, I'm drawing a blank now. Hang on one second. It's probably on here. Uh, 
Uh, shoot. Um, well, let me. I'll get to it here in a second. But essentially, what you want to do is look at all the different ways that you can pay them. There are services that, that allow you to pay virtual assistants. They will do the uh, like PayPal, but it's not PayPal. There's other services that you can contract out to, and you pay them, and then they'll turn on and pay the virtual assistant. They control the flow. It doesn't cost that much. Um, in any case, here's some examples, right? You know, wire transfer, um, there's a small fee. It's very timely. It takes three to five days. That's the third one here. That's one of my favorites. Um, there's a RIA money transfer. There's different versions. Obviously, the cheap ones, it's only three bucks um, per thousand. There is a currency conversion cost. Total cost about six thousand. Excuse me, about six dollars per payment. So if you send a virtual assistant a hundred dollars, it's going to cost you one hundred and six dollars. Okay. Um, you can see the next one's a little bit faster. They do it virtually. We call it real time, but it does cost you about ten bucks per payment. Um, TransferWise, LBC Home, um, PNB. You can see Wells Fargo is can be a little bit pricey, but the fact is I'm not using it a lot. And I like the uh, I like the fact that uh, I like the fact that Wells Fargo is um, the bank I use for my other for my business purposes, anyways. So it's easy for me to track. Everything is done uh, in one place. Um, it comes out of my account. Like all my reports, everything that I need. Um, hang on one second here. Sorry, I thought my phone was on mute. Um, it's it basically all one-stop shopping. Everything is uh, automatically tied to my accounts, which are automatically tied to my bookkeeping system. That's why I like Wells Fargo. Um, you know, Remedy, uh, Express Money, uh, US Forex, uh, Payoneer, MoneyGram. You can see these are all different options for you to pay the virtual assistants. Okay. Uh, Western Union is another popular one. Um, there is no uh, actual... Uh, you know, per thousand is no per thousand fee, but there is a, a currency conversion fee because it's going to cost you 28 bucks. Um, Philip, the Filipinos actually like Western Union. Um, I don't know why, because it takes longer, but they, it's, uh, they, I think they like getting that, that Western Union telegram that with the payment. All right, it's actual. It's, they know it's guaranteed funds. All right, uh, Transfast, World Remit, Lucky Money. <clears throat> These are all ones you can use. All right, if you choose to do so. So. You have that as you have this available to you. Um, a lot of these folks like to be paid weekly, some bi-weekly, some monthly. I tend to like uh, the monthly myself. Most of what I do is done on a monthly basis. All right. Um, okay. One more critical subject, and that is um, managing. Okay, managing this whole affair of working with virtual assistants. It's a little bit different than working with people directly. In other words. When you have people work with you directly here in the states, it's you're it's all in person. You're, you know, you're in front of them. They're in front of you. Um, even if they're um, they're virtual assistants in the states, essentially you're closer in time zone. You can have more phone calls, more one-on-one -on -one meetings, webinars, things like that. Um, it is easier. So when it comes to the overseas virtual assistants, you have to remember. That it is going to be, it's going to add a layer of complexity because of the difference in time, and you have to manage that. You have to manage expectations as far as our turnaround, the quality of the work um, that they perform. Okay, like if they do Craigslist ads or they do Facebook ads, um, what does it look like? How does it feel? What do you think of it? Would it draw your attention? And more importantly, what kind of results are you getting? So if your ads are not pulling then you've got to either change your ad or change your virtual assistant or change both. Um, I can tell you this, uh, just like everything else, any other type of a hire, you always want to hire fast. Okay, I'm sorry, hire slow. Excuse me. Who got that backwards. Hire slow and fire fast. The good news is with a virtual assistant says you try them the first time. You give them the benefit of the doubt the second time. You confirm things on the third time. So three three times they're either in or they're out. There's no messy. Um, there's there's no employment contracts. There's no paperwork. There's no paper trail. There's none of that stuff associated with having to let go of a virtual assistant. All right. So now if you do your homework correctly, you shouldn't have to let a lot of virtual assistants go. Um, if you if you 
do the screening process correctly up front and you clearly define your task and you clearly define your roles, okay? Um, you've clearly defined, in other words, expectations, you should actually get better results. And if you've done your disk profile, done a, a sample, a writing sample, have them do a writing sample for you, and if you've done all those steps we described in the beginning, you should find yourself with a, with a if not just one, possibly three or five really good virtual assistants. Um, one strategy I like to do over time, even my favorite virtual assistant, I never had him work for me full time. I always had a number of virtual assistants work for me, and he, and he, maybe as few as three, but even more, because I like to always be able to compare results. And the reason that's important is you might find the best virtual assistant on the planet, but one of the, one of the things we've discovered is with these folks, not just Filipinos, but any, any employee or virtual assistant or part-time part -time worker is, sometimes they tend to uh, slack off over time. Their results tend to diminish. Um, they tend to deteriorate, and it's very hard to notice because it's such a gradual thing. So if you're always having, if you always have a handful of people working with you, you know, like three people, for example, it makes it easier to identify shortfalls or shortcomings in performance. Okay, then you can take appropriate measures uh, to either keep them or not keep them or whatever the case is, and that's why we described the funnel earlier. Because once you're up and running, your funnel is going to give you a constant stream of really good applicants that you can try out. And if you find that you, you have a new person that you think will outperform an old person, they make the switch. Okay? Um, in any case, that's pretty much it, guys. Let me, let me drop my control panel back over and see if you have any questions. And we do have questions, so let me go back up here. Okay, here's one more. Okay, this is from Joe. Hey, Joe. Uh, Joe is asking, okay, what is the minimum number of hours per week to start with? I, I like two hours, Joe. Um, and again, what you can do is you can, instead of telling them you're going to hire them two hours per week, just say you have a specific task, okay, that you can give them that you believe would take two hours. And don't tell them that they have to worry about getting it done in two hours. Just say this is what we anticipate. Okay, you may, you may take less time, you may take more time. What you're looking for, Joe, is feedback, prompt response, um, accuracy, and quality. Okay, um, you're looking for all those characteristics, so you just want to try them out. And if they work out, you just, again, let's say you did that three times in a row, so they pass three times, the third time is your confirmation. Then you can say, okay, I'm going to hire you on a regular basis two hours per week for a month. And if, if I have more business as a result of this, I will hire you for another couple hours. But don't promise anything at that point. Just say, in other words, disclose. Let them know that this is the process that you're going to go through together. All right? Um, you know, I didn't really uh, – so Joe's asking if I use timesheets. I, I really didn't because they're not employees. Um, what I'm looking for is – uh, how much are they charging me? I know what the hourly rate is, so I can determine how many hours they're spending. Um, but I don't really feel like I'm getting a good bang for my buck. You know, can I hire other people to do a better job in less time and for less money? So you're always looking. Remember, you're a business owner now, and you got to feel, think, act, and speak like a business owner, and that's one of the ways you do it. Um, excellent question, by the way. Okay, guys. Uh, that is it for this subject. I hope that helps you. Um, I highly recommend you you roll up your sleeves, uh, do this for the first time. It does not cost a lot of money, and that few precious hours that it gains you, um, I promise you, will result in more clients and more transactions. Does, does that make sense? Um, okay. Uh, thanks, Fossil, for your feedback. I appreciate that. I think you're doing an excellent job, too. By the way, I did see your email, Fossil, coming in. I'll, I'm going to get to it later this evening. I've got another uh, actual training webinar <laughs> to do for a new employee, um, but I'll, I'm going to figure out a help us figure out a date and time to get together when I'm up in New York City. So thanks, you guys, for being part of this. Um, again, for all the new folks, welcome aboard. Um, uh, keep me posted. Let me know what you want to cover in these in these webinars. The more feedback you give me, the better am I able to serve you, and that's what I'm here for, help you help you uh, get some transactions in your pocket, 
and move on, build a team, and start investing yourself, okay? That's what this is all about. Thanks, Joe. You're, you're very welcome, too. Thank you. Okay, guys, we will see you next week, and next week is going to be um, Tuesday, August 30th, and I will be in Connecticut doing that one, okay? So you guys have a wonderful remainder of the week. God bless you all, and we will see you next week. Okay, bye-bye.